Would you please pray with me? O oh, Creator God, who gives us life, we thank you for the gift of your word and for the words that you place on each of our hearts. And oh dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to begin this morning by acknowledging that today, Mother's Day, comes with a lot of mixed emotions, doesn't it? I mean, while it certainly is a day to celebrate and give thanks and recognize all the mothers and the mother figures in our lives, I also want to acknowledge that this day can be a hard day for many among us, for those among us whose mothers have died or are experiencing declining health, and for those among us for whom motherhood hasn't been easy or for those for whom motherhood hasn't been an option. And so, here in this sacred space that God is creating among and through and with us this day, we honor and we bless the truth of each personal experience of motherhood and mothering on this Mother's Day. Now, it has been my experience as both a preacher and as a woman that the theme of Mother's Day seems to have this way of inspiring and shaping my sermon on this day, and that is certainly true this Sunday on this Mother's Day. And I'll get to that later. But to start with our gospel reading, this reading this morning from John chapter 14 is brief. The language is intimate, and the message is even mystical as Jesus describes this union, this holy union, this oneness that he experiences in relation to God. Now, to go back just for a moment to last week's gospel reading that Reverend Tim read, you may recall that the tone and tenor of the Gospel of John has shifted by this point. And we now have entered into what is often referred to as the farewell discourse, or the Last Supper discourse, which takes place from uh, John chapter 14 through 17. And as you may remember from last week, in that first section of this chapter, 14, Jesus offers words of assurance to Thomas when Jesus says, If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And then again, soon thereafter, Jesus also speaks to Philip rather sharply, when he says, If you know me, you will know my Father also. Here, Jesus seems to be trying to get his disciples to understand that they are one in the same, God as Father and as Jesus. And so today, this farewell discourse, or this emotionally charged tension, if you will, between Jesus and his disciples continues. And Jesus goes on to prepare them for when he will no longer be with them in his earthly form. And instead, Jesus promises that God will still be present with them to teach them and encourage them through the gift of the spirit of truth. In our text today from John 14, Jesus tells his disciples that God will give them, in his words, another advocate or one who would be with them forever. 
he then goes on to explain that the advocate is the spirit of truth, the one who will always abide with them and in them. The word advocate here has been translated from the biblical Greek word par parakletos, or paraclete, and a paraclete is defined as one who comforts, or consoles, or aids, or intercedes. And so, in this story that Jesus promises his disciples and all of us today, that the paraclete, or the spirit of truth, or what we now refer to as the Holy Spirit, will be with us forever. As an aside, the traditional Trinitarian language, or God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as, the, as church doctrine, wasn't officially accepted until a few hundred years later at the Council of Nicaea. But I love that here in our reading today, Jesus is describing God as the spirit of truth. God as spirit. God is spirit. And in the Hebrew scriptures, which Jesus knew inside and out, of course, the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach, which is a feminine noun. And so, when I assign a gender to the Holy Spirit, it is often female. In our reading from John today, we are given different names for God. Father and Jesus and Advocate and Spirit of Truth. But on this Day, this Mother's Day Sunday, it seems only fitting to lift up some of the other maternal images of God that we find in the Bible. One of the common images is God as a mother bird, sheltering her children under her wings. We find this image in Ruth, the book of Ruth, chapter 2 in the Old Testament, when Boaz says to Ruth, may you be richly blessed under whose wings you have come to take refuge. And then in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus says to the crowds and his disciples, O oh, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. There are also scriptural references to God as mother. In Isaiah chapter 42, the prophet calls out, but now like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, and I pant. And then later on in Isaiah chapter 66, the prophet writes, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. On this Mother's Day Sunday, no matter what our gender or our parental status or what our experiences of mothering have, have or have not been, in our text today, we do encounter a mothering God through the intimate presence that Jesus offers through his devotion and compassion and care and love and deep, deep connection to his followers then and to us today. In this reading from John 14, Jesus tells us and assures us by saying, on that day, you'll know that I am in God, and you are in me, and I am in you. As scripture teaches us again and again and again, relating to God in a maternal role is nothing new. And so, 
I'd like to close this morning with a brief reflection written by Julian of Norwich, who was a 14th century Christian mystic. It comes from her book called Revelations of Divine Love, which, by the way, is believed to have been the first book in English to be authored by a woman. As a theologian, Julian of Norwich is known for her extended comparison of God to a mother. Julian wrote the following words all those centuries ago. She writes, It is thus logical that God, being our father, be also our mother. Our father desires, our mother operates, and our good Lord the Holy Ghost confirms that we are thus well advised to love God through whom we have our being, to thank God reverently and to praise our Father for having created us and to pray fervently to our mother so as to obtain mercy and compassion and to pray to our Lord, the Holy Ghost, to obtain help and grace. Thanks be to our mothering God. Amen.